All right, welcome back in Alive Now. I'm Austin Westfall. Look at the northern lights. That's not a live image, but some of y'all might have the chance to see some pretty sights in the sky. A severe geomagnetic storm may be brewing early next week, and many Americans across the nation, perhaps even as far as the Deep South, may be treated to a rare display of the northern lights, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Space Weather Prediction Center. Speaking of the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center, Rob Steenberg is standing by. We're going to discuss everything you need to know about a weather event like this and some of the sights that may come from something like this. I'm going to start off, thanks for coming on, I'm going to start off by showing you this post from NOAA. They say, upgrade, G4. Um, most of the people watching this broadcast, including myself, don't know what G4 means off the top of our heads. Can you put it in layman's terms for us? I sure can. Uh, that's just one of our NOAA scales. G stands for geomagnetic, so it involves the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, the scale runs from one to five, with five being the most severe and one being the least severe, a minor storm. Uh, so we're expecting a severe uh, level four storm um, and what that means uh, for you and me is the uh, increased possibility of seeing the aurora. I got to ask you, how often does something like this take place? I mean, when I was reading in the introduction, the fact that even southern states could possibly see a little bit of this thing, how often do people that far down south have the opportunity to see something like this? On average, over an 11-year solar cycle, about 100 times. So they're they're not very common, um, but they're not uh, they're not super rare either. And we should probably make something clear: what you're seeing on the screen right now, this is not the type of aurora borealis that would be seen down south. Correct? We would be seeing a less intense version of it, if I had to guess. As it stands now, yeah, you'd probably be seeing it on the horizon. Um, one thing that's interesting is that uh, you know. People used to see the aurora only with their naked eye, but now that people have cell phones, uh, sometimes you can capture aurora that's not visible to the naked eye uh, using your cell phone. So I always encourage people um, to, uh, you know, take a step out and even take a picture if they don't see anything and see what the picture shows them. And people can uh, look up tips and tricks with their cell phone, by the way. Uh, depending on what carrier you have, you can take long exposure shots on your phone. That'll open up basically the amount of light that your phone can capture. Sometimes it takes 10, 15 seconds for it to take the shot, but you'll get prettier uh, images out of something like this. Um, what's causing something like this to happen? Does it originate with the sun? It absolutely does. You're absolutely right. So uh, the sun ejects part of its atmosphere towards Earth, and it can get here in as little as 18 hours to as many as three days. Um, when it arrives at Earth, it has a magnetic field that interacts with Earth's magnetic field, and that uh, orientation of the magnetism when it interacts determines how much energy gets transferred into our atmosphere and the resulting strength of the storm. So, and again, I'll go back to this post from um, NOAA, and they say, upgrade G4. I see the word severe at the top of the graphic here. When I hear the word severe, that has a negative connotation to it. Um, are there any, perhaps, uh, dangerous side effects that can come with a storm like this? So for the general public, um, you know, really you're just reaping the benefits of being able to see the aurora. Uh, for various sectors, um, such as the power distribution sector or the uh, low Earth orbiting satellite sector, uh, there are measures that they need to take to be prepared for these storms. And so we are in constant contact with those uh, various sectors uh, to keep them up to date on the storm conditions and to allow them to make preparations so that those impacts are mitigated and you don't really notice. Can you expect, uh, can you like explain the, the science behind how a geomagnetic magnetic storm can impact stuff like power infrastructure on the ground? Certainly. Um, when that geomagnetic storm happens, remember I talked about the conflict of the magnet or the interaction of the magnetic fields. Um, uh, when you take Earth's magnetic field and start causing it to move, uh, and that is superimposed over long conductors like power lines, it can actually induce a current. It's the way a generator works. 
So we're actually inducing extra current on the power lines. And this is something that the power lines uh, and the companies making the power uh, don't need or want. And so they need to find ways to mitigate that influence. And that's what's going on in that case. Another post, um, this one saying, we will not know the true nature of the CME, by the way, CME stands for coronal mass ejection structure, until it arrives at our solar wind observatories located 1 million miles from Earth. There's a whole lot of NOAA jargon in this post. <laughs> Can you explain <laughs> what we're looking at and what we're reading here? And, and when will we have a better idea of what this storm is gonna look like here on Earth? Sure. Um, so what happens is we can capture that eruption leaving the sun using imagery uh, that's taken from space, from satellites in space, and we analyze that imagery and make a prediction about when it's going to arrive. But that's all we can do. And then there's all this space, interplanetary space, that this thing travels through that we really don't know much more about it until it hits a satellite about a million miles from Earth. Um, and we kind of think of that as a buoy, uh, like you would have a buoy out in the ocean where you might get your first wind or, or sea height readings. Uh, we're getting our first readings of what the actual magnetic field strength and orientation is in that coronal mass ejection. So once it reaches our buoy out in space, now we start to have a better idea of how the event might unfold. And from that, then we can make decisions about issuing warnings. How far away is 1 million miles from Earth? How far away is the sun from the Earth, for example? Okay, 93 million miles. Okay. So, it's so a... yeah, it's it's cruising here. We've got 92 million miles of, huh. <laughs> you know what's happening. <laughs> and then, bam. So what I else? like to tell people it's it's as if, you know, you've got a, a phone call as the, uh, as the, um, as the hurricane made, made landfall in the Florida Keys, you know, and you're on the coast up in Mississippi or Louisiana, you get a phone call. Hey, <laughs> I got to I got to ask. There's there's a few of us in this room that have never seen the northern lights before. Have you seen it before? I have seen it. I was very fortunate uh, back in May of 2024 to see the Northern Lights uh, here in, in Colorado where I live. And uh, it was, you know, it was uh, kind of washed out on the horizon because I live, I live kind of in a, in a metropolitan area and light pollution takes a toll. So the darker places you can be, uh, the better off you are to see it. Um, there. But yes, I have seen it. And uh, it was kind of a faint glow on the horizon for me. And uh, the the less light pollution uh, in the area, the better. And there are light pollution maps available online for people that live in huge metro areas like Los Angeles or something like that. You don't want to be in the middle of the city. That's not going to be the most <laughs> advantageous place to see something like the Aurora Borealis. But one last thing, the further north you are in the U.S., or perhaps we've got some Canadian viewers watching too, the, the further north you are, the better shot you got of seeing something pretty in the sky, correct? Yes, yes. That's correct, Rob. Yep. So, or say, if you're, you know, if you're in the southern hemisphere, same. <laughs> yeah, Rob. Who's south? You. I gotta say, uh, we we cover a lot. I always get excited when we get the chance to talk about anything science related. So, thanks for coming on. Have a good rest of your weekend. We'll talk soon. Well, thank you, Austin. It was great to be here. All right. Take care. We uh. We love talking about stuff like this. By the way, look at these images. Uh, anybody, by the by the way, if anybody does get to see anything like this this week, any of our viewers, feel free to take a photo. Feel free to uh, tweet it at me, at Westfall Austin, or you could tweet it at Live Now Fox. We would love to see some of your photos. We'll share them throughout the week if we get any uh, pretty stuff like this. I love looking at these kinds of things. All right, let's slide away for a quick commercial break. Live look at the U.S. Capitol on this Saturday evening, just about 8.40 in the nation's capital, 540 out west. Let's take a break. We'll be right back.